but I just have to add this in because this is insane. So we're actually allowed to be using the so-called emergency lane here because of course too much traffic. That's what happens when you have special plates. Okay, so we're going to a BMW service center, but it's got not much to do with BMWs. Welcome to another really interesting location here in Jakarta. Today I'm at a BMW service center, but it's not really the BMWs I'm here to look at. Uh, it's more the, the fact that there's a lot of other stuff that is being collected here. Call it a spillover of a specific car collection here in Jakarta. You know, when you start collecting a lot of cars, you need space to store them and you need a place to look after them, restore them and just get them uh, looking their best. And this is exactly what this place does. So basically, I'm just going to run you through what we're seeing here. It's, it's vast and it's very diverse and I don't even know where to start. I mean, okay, so we'll just take a look at this uh, first floor here, starting with this G-Wagon Shorty. I thought Japan was, you know, a hotspot for G-Wagon collectors or G-Wagon enthusiasts, but um, Jakarta is definitely showing to be just as impressive when it comes to that. Uh, there's a R34 GTR here that's in the process of getting restored. There's no engine. Next to it, or in front of it rather, a BMW M3 competition that has obviously had a bit of a drift mishap. I can kind of imagine what happened here. Tail went out wide, hit a curb, and then the car bounced and hit the front as well so I don't know if it's total but definitely in for some repair an Evo 6 Lancer a ton of Mercedes of every possible vintage and model some BMWs scattered in there of course this is a BMW shop I'm just gonna walk past all of this stuff old six series, seven series. It's literally all here. And um, there's two more cool G-Wagons here. How about the van version? Don't see these too often and definitely never seen one in Japan. On some uh, very well-worn off-road tires. It's just crazy to me, the appreciation that you find in countries that you would never even imagine uh, would be so into a specific European car, for example, like the G-Wagon. And uh, if we continue the, the tour here, let's go down this little side with the Benzit. Nice green 280E, 190. Another G-Wagon shell that's been prepped and restored. Little Coppin in the front, just to add a bit of variety. This uh, G-Wagon has been completely stripped down, cleaned up, ready for paint. Older Mercedes. Vintage 7 Series here. This looks like possibly a Range Rover under here. Another 280E. Like I feel like I'm in some uh, Mercedes museum, not really a BMW service shop. But uh, let's continue because before we continue with all the German stuff, I think we should take a look at what I've decided to call the JDM corner. Forget the Jeep, that's got nothing to do with it. A Mugen Double R. This is uh, as rare as it gets when it comes to Hondas. Past the Rubicon, we have two Supras, the 80 and the 90. A GRMN Yaris. Of course, this was actually uh, presented last year at the Tokyo Auto Salon in January. Very limited edition production. There was actually a lottery uh, to buy these cars. And uh, funny seeing one here in Jakarta. So tons and tons of carbon on this car. And we'll have to see if we can take a look inside. Carbon hood, 
Of course, like every single car in Jakarta, you have to go for these really dark tints because the sun is just so strong here. And at the bottom here, a Z33 convertible Roadster and what looks like to be a completely bone stock FD3S. Oh, I even just noticed the A90 is actually on work, Meisters. Such a cool looking car. All right, let's go down here. When it comes to G-Wagons, I think this is the one that really impresses me the most that I've seen so far. So this is a 280 GE. So it's a shorty two door, amazing condition. And it's got the jump seats at the back too. So you can have seven passengers in this stunning red old school G-Wagon, which looks like it may have come from the UK. And right behind it, a 190 2.5 A Pagoda on BBS RS's. Look at this thing. Beautifully slammed on the Ovas AD08Rs. Don't you just love when like there's German cars of this vintage sporting a little hint of JDMness? I think that is even more interesting than having it completely stock to me at least. So this is a 350 SL model. And oh my God, I didn't even notice. Mitsubishi Legnum on old Volks T37 Tokyo Time Attacks. Let's continue looking at the Mercedes lineup here. There's just so much. And over here, a 190 SL, beautiful looking thing. So we found the keys to the GRMN. Let's take a look inside. So it actually comes with these insane bucket seats that even have side airbags. So Recaro's with the GR emblem. And a very interesting looking section here in the center. All right, I'm gonna make my way down the ramp to the lower level, just to see some of the cars that we saw coming in. Glad I came here. So this is a A86 in the midst of a restoration. Looks like it's actually been taken down to bare metal, so emphasizing that they do stuff seriously here. EG6 and E30 convertible. And check this out. This old school 7 series with a Toyota Racing sticker on the back. And I did mention that the Mugen Double R upstairs was one of three double R's here in Indonesia. And I guess we just found what may possibly be number two. Countless more Mercedes of every generation here being worked on. A 200 SC 3.5. Possibly my favorite Mercedes of all time after the G-Wagon, the SLS Goldwing. God, this car is just sick. What has Mercedes done replacing this with a GT? I have no idea.
Okay, so we're actually at the front of the shop. So, uh, yeah, basically, it's your regular BMW service center dealer. Yet, when you actually start coming inside, you notice that it's dotted with old school cars, like this 735 IL. And in the showroom, there's an old 520 in olive green, beautifully sitting there. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the engine because it's not every day you come across a three liter CSI, so must indulge. Take a quick look inside. And as ever, my, my thing to do with all the cars is always to get a, a whiff of that interior. Kind of brings me back to the old days and of course, a wooden RD wheel. Uh, I'm really spoiled because I have the most awesome group of people taking me around and showing me hidden treasures that you could just never know of or even possibly find by yourself. So I'm extremely grateful to everybody that's helped me uh, during my time here in Jakarta. And uh, it's only morning. We still have another day to go through and visit more shops. So uh, this vlog will continue to another shop. So uh, on we go. So it's pretty funny how um, wherever I go, I find myself going to car garages. And today it's a little bit different. It's a car garage that stores part of a very interesting collection of cars that we began looking at elsewhere. This is the Nismo uh, R35 GTR the, that we took out the other day for the car meet. And it's joined by the Honda NSX on the HRE wheels. Of course, we just passed the NA1. NSXR over here, DC5 in yellow. This is a G's Toyota Velfire, which we've been riding in a couple of times already during this trip. And over here, there's some more secret stuff that's being covered up. We might see if we can remove some of the covers. Porsche 944. Uh, but there's one car that um, I just literally stood in front and just drooled over for a good 15 seconds. And that would be the Nismo R34, the CRS. So of course, like that very first CRS I shot back in 2012 or 2013 now, it has the same dark silver paint, carbon fiber Z-tune bumper, fenders, R-tune carbon fiber hood, the full carbon fiber treatment here with the inlet piping, the airbox, and of course that R2 engine. Uh, of course now Nismo goes up all the way to R4. In the future it will probably even be something over that we don't know yet but there are some rumors going around of special blocks being made elsewhere and being used for future nismo engines but i mean jesus look at this thing <laughs> So the interesting thing about uh, this actual engine setup being an R2, it's a little bit more special than an R2. And as you can see, it's got two Nismo plaques. So originally it was based on a fine spec RB26, but then Nismo took that fine spec and added the triple R 2.8 block and rebuilt the engine to R2 specification. So it's a Nismo with a Nismo package on top. So uh, hence why it's got two plaques and it probably makes it even more valuable and special than just having a regular R2 done at Nismo. 
and there's been some additions of course there's uh, an old catch tank uh, it looks like a Midori item that's been powder coated it's got braided lines running to the two rear venting uh, outlets on the cam covers and um, the ready fuel rail has been added an interesting cover here uh, that kind of hides the injector wiring box and also fuel pressure regulator with a gauge and the Omori factory strut tower bar I mean it's got all the goodies and one thing I'm extremely jealous of are of course the carbon fiber uh, z-trim parts the bumper and the fenders and uh, also the r-tune bonnet um, it's the hood to have really on a 34 there's been so many replicas made but uh, the original thing is just an amazing creation and this has the optional uh, scoop that you kind of rivet onto the actual underside of the bonnet and that will scoop up air from the grill and direct it into the airbox with this scoop and then direct the air into the outlet there and straight into the carbon airbox. This carbon airbox is currently out of production. Uh, Nismo have stopped making them for the time being. So uh, it was already a $5,000 piece. Now, if you can actually find one, God knows how much that would come to. I even spotted there's a Nismo carbon mirror cover. Nice little touch. And that massive strut race. This is, in my eyes, uh, probably one of the best Ferraris to own, uh, simply because it's a four-seater, and if you have kids, you'll be able to take them on uh, rides with you. Something you can't really do with two-seater Ferraris, unfortunately, especially if you have more than one kid like I do. So always a pleasure to see the FF or the GT4 Lusso, which replaced it. And uh, I'm sort of nerding over this NSX because uh, this is a very, very rare car in Japan. You do not see many of these. Uh, of course, Honda pulled the plug on this new gen NSX. They weren't selling very well. They were too pricey and not a lot of uh, enthusiasts went for it. Simple uh, for the fact that it was just too expensive. But uh, seeing one slammed on a set of HREs, it just goes to show these cars are just as good looking as the original. Maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, Yip is going to give me a hand here and do the dramatic reveal because we just found out that it's not actually a 944, but it's a 968. And as you can see there on the door on the side, a club sport. It even has my initials in the number plate. This is a very special car. So I guess think of this car as the front engine equivalent of a 964 RS or a 993 RS. Bucket seats. Minimal instrumentation or gadgets or switches, just very simple. It's a very focused driver's car with a really almost perfect weight distribution. Of course, this car runs a transaxle, so most of the weights of the dry line sits pretty much centered to the car. I actually just noticed this uh, NSXR runs spoon front calipers and then on the side it's got advanced side skirts. I'm sure Masa will be very happy to see that. And over here another NSX. This is a regular Type S I believe. Stock wheels, black and it has one of those cool covers that Beetle Black makes here in Jakarta. Right, yet another amazing selection of cars. I just got to say thank you again to the owner to keep showing me his various locations where he keeps so many cool cars. And uh, it's not over yet. It's still mid afternoon here and we have one more stop to make. So uh, we're going to hop in uh, one of these cars and uh, head out there. OK, 
okay, as if this day couldn't get any better, we're actually not riding on the Hyundai Palisade SUV anymore, but we're actually taking the FF. <laughs> my camera gear in there and look at the interior it's like a chocolate brown leather while we're at it I think we should probably warm up the NSXR a little bit too sounds amazing with an aftermarket exhaust So we've just arrived at our next venue, Engine Plus. But we do have a very sweet 993 here as well. The FF we just rocked up in. Yep. In front of a Mugen Civic. Not the double R, just the Mugen grill. And then an orange 240Z. It's like the Indonesian version of uh, Larry's car. So this 930 yeah. is a 3.4, 3.4 Motec, yes. E99, DBS Motorsport wheels, 5-speed Brembo, Brembo brakes, everything on this thing. Look at the color on it too. And I mean, just look at the setup the Edge of Plus have. They have so many bays. Unbelievable. And here's that K-swapped turbo four-wheel drive EG from the show. I thought it was actually the car that we saw coming in, in the, on the dyno. Beautiful sparkling silver R32 on LMGT4s. Okay, so we can take a look at the engine here. I'll check out the intercooler setup. Intercooler from uh, Turbocraft. Turbocraft stuff, yeah. huh? Man, that is beautiful. So we're just gonna walk here because, oh God. 993 Nine turbo. turbo. 964, 3.6, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I think, wait, I need to breathe now, <laughs> it's too much goodness, but just like, we've been here like 1.2 minutes, <laughs> wow, look at this thing, grey interior, dark blue exterior, let's start with this Evo right here, so this is the Evo 5 that was at the IMX show, Evo 4, sorry, Evo 4 that was the IMX show, the drag car, nine second car, crazy turbo setup here, massive PWR, charge cooler, but it really gets serious as we walk down here. This is overwhelming cubed. So we have a GT3 GTR race car, a 308 GTB, a Testarossa, a 992 GT, 3RS and a Koenig's Specials. Wow. And I haven't even seen the rest yet. Engine Plus is on another level. Oh my lord. Another 964 white body, possibly a turbo or an RS. White R32 with a massive single. 3.2 3.2 liter, yeah. so Australian stuff. <laughs> What's it running? Huh? Is that an RB30 block or? Uh, Tomei. Tomei. Yeah, Tomei built special engine for us. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. An OS geek in transmission too, OS88. Yeah. Oh, it's completely stripped out too. And how good does a 992 GT3 RS look in red? Right, let's go to the back here behind the Testarossa and check out this E36, which literally has an engine in the dashboard. This is obviously a pretty serious race car build. 
Can you tell me something about this um, E36? E36 track car. So reposition the engine. Reposition the engine. Fabbed up the mounts. The engine mounts fabbed by us. Yeah. All the the radiator actually came out of our Evo. Okay. So we we changed the mounts and all modified it all to work. Um, the engine's moved back about 30 centimeters ish. The firewall wasn't cut by us, it was cut by another shop. So mm -hmm. the car came in like this. I see. We did the wiring. Was it all fabbed up with the cage as well? Or? Cage, I believe the cage is a custom cage. Okay. Custom cages. We just welded everything before right. at our front shop. We did the e what I got. Yeah. Um, That's insane. And I just got to point out that the entire engine is completely behind the suspension turret. So this is indeed a front midship layout. Let me just emphasize how special this car is. So it's not just your average Koenig special, which is silly to say, but this is actually one of three in the world built on a 512 BB. Incredible. So car is in for a full restore, just finished still sitting a bit high obviously for ease of moving it around but look at this rear end look at the air intakes on the side I guess maybe Lamborghini copied this off of Koenig massive wing insanely wide rear end GT3 here in the middle. This car was actually on display at the show. I have to take a look inside because these things are absolute crazy things. Carbon fiber doors, full on motorsport spec, everything. Now, this would be the ultimate toy. But the crazy thing is, so the crazy thing is, these guys have actually told me that. Um, they're going to rebuild the engine on the GT3 GTR here and actually extract all the potential the engine hides away. So I'm going to change the turbos, go for like 700 horsepower or something. And uh, then it'll be very, very fun. So let's go and take a look at the engine room where engines are assembled. They have a bunch of air cooled stuff here. And I have to say, it's really cool to see a shop out here in Southeast Asia that actually does air cooled. Um, I visited a bunch of countries and I've never really seen much work done to these very complex engines, completely mechanical and very, very meticulous in the way that they have to be put together and, uh, and function. So many little parts in these things. It's like a Swiss watch. Next room up is where engines get blueprinted and there's a flow bench test flow efficiency of heads here we go so that creates the vacuum and sucks through the valves all right i'm gonna get right back to checking out some of these cars look at the condition this 964 is in turbo 3.6 and here's the complete opposite Honda EG6 with possibly an engine swap. So this is a K series swap. I'm just blown away at how good a GT3 RS looks in red. This thing is like the definition of aggression. 
Although, you know what? I would have loved to see all these plastic bits done in carbon fiber, including the fender vents, the roof fins, the end plates. I mean, honestly, I think that's what the aftermarket is for. But you know what I mean, right? And this car is actually already running aftermarket exhaust. I love the dash and interior combo on this thing. Usually, these, uh, usually the 964 dashes end up getting nasty cracks right uh, alongside them. And either you buy a new dash from Porsche or you get one of those replicas from uh, parts suppliers, but doing like a nice leather retrim or Alcantara retrim really gives a nice touch to the cabin. All right, so <clears throat> we got the EG6 up on the lift because I wanted to take a look underneath at the all-wheel drive conversion. So as you can see, it's running a rear end from a CRV and a two-piece prop shaft all the way to the front, front on this sequential Quaif gearbox. Modified 930 with a MoTeC. What a build. It's so clean underneath, you can probably eat your food off the can covers. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call Engine Plus the sequential shop because every single car in this place has got a sequential. What did you say this runs? A, a Hollinger? Uh, X-Shift. Uh, X-Shift sequential, six speed. Billet intake. How much horsepower? Eight or 750. 750. Pump gas. On pump gas. We Inotec exhaust on a brand spanking new GT3 RS. At least it quietens down a little bit. A little bit. Oh my god. I hope I hope the owner has nice neighbors. Jesus. That is oh my god. Alright, 3.2 liter RB32 with a turbo the size of a generator. It sounds so mean, but it's so much quieter than the GT3 RS. It sounds pretty badass. Lumpy idle, love it. Airborne. Still have airborne. <laughs> Well, since there's only three in the world, I guess we should probably ask to see the engine because what other chance are you going to get to see something this special? So this would be flat 12 twin turbo. Ah, oh, there you go. Wow, look at this thing. So we are upgrading from the Kjetronic system to... The idea with this car is to actually modernize it to, let's call it OAM++ because you guys are going to get rid of the uh, the coil and do coil on sp on, yeah, on plug and uh, what ECU are you going to be running? Uh, twin Max ECU. Okay. And the turbos? Uh, twin GTX 35. 35s. Oh, It'll completely change the character of the engine. No problem. Just caption there. 
look at this. Also, I have to point out, this is the actual real Testarossa, as in the first gen with the single mirror. This is the one that collectors want because it is the original with the center locks. So uh, in later models, they went to five lugs. But if you know your Testarossas, you would know that this is the one to have. VR38 GT3, number 15. So it's crazy they still run the stock air boxes because of regulations. GT3 turbos. And you guys are going to modify this? Of course. Of course. Silly question. <laughs> okay, we're going to try to start the Evo 4 drag car. close this uh, engine plus shop tour here and end this vlog it's been an insane day we've seen so much i've been privileged to really get deep into indonesian car culture with some of the craziest owners out here i really hope you enjoyed seeing uh, what today brought for me and i think this trip i'm going to consider basically as being kind of like a scoping out things type of tour i'll definitely be back in indonesia and do things with a bit more detail. I think so many cars deserve their own special video, their special feature. So I'll definitely be back for more. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and make sure you check back for more soon. Look at that shit. Vero Master. <laughs>